So what is your um, collective vision there for Spirit going forward? You guys have obviously expanded a lot of routes and not being a COVID, you know, going to hopefully taper off at some point, whether it's more the end of this year or in, you know, Q1 or late Q1 next year. Like what is your overall vision for Spirit going forward? Now we have a, a, a rather modest mission statement uh, of which a component is to be the most successful airline on earth. So, you know, other than that, pretty solid. Um, yeah. So, and, and obviously that's ambitious as they should be. Um, you don't put a mission out there that's like, you know, it should be pretty good. Um, yeah. You want it to be something the group can reach for. But I think we thought a lot about that. Um, and I, I told you earlier that, and it's not because of Ted Christie. It's not. Mm -hmm. This is a business that can actually transform the way people travel every, every day. Um, and that's pretty impressive for an industry that's largely mature. You know, we're not reinventing, um, we're not releasing a new technology every year that's, that's kind of a new whiz-bang technology. Mm -hmm. um, we're still physical airplanes moving people physically across space. We may do it a little bit more efficiently. We may make your experience a little better, but it's still the same thing. But we think we can do it better than anyone else has ever done it before because we can be more affordable and we can be more reliable. Um, and so our vision here is to kind of continue to catapult that forward. Um, and that's not by taking market share from other airlines or doing it. We just don't think about our business that way. Um, we're creating opportunity. We're stimulating new travelers with low fares. And, and that's not just um, fancy word speak. That's, that's real data-driven information that when we can come into a new market that we fly, that we've never operated before, but it's usually been operated by another airline. So we don't, we don't create new routes, okay? Um, we generally lower the fare by about 30%. So whatever is the prevailing fare at the time. And when that happens, um, good old Adam Smith, you know, uh, the director of kind of economic theory, he was right. More people do it. And on average, it's about 40% more. So if the market's big enough and we can lower the fare low enough, we can stimulate enough people to justify our entry. And, um, and that ends up being pretty powerful no matter where you go, because um, you're, like I said earlier, you're taking this good that used to cost this much and only the top of the pyramid can use it. Right. And you're doing this to it. And now a wider piece of it can be, can be used and um, nothing more. Um, even in, even in this time, um, this difficult time that we're in as, as a world dealing with this pandemic, but there's nothing more important than connecting with, with people and, and your family. And that's why I don't think that's going to change. Um, so um, that's our that's our goal is to continue to do that, and we think we can continue to grow um, in the places we serve and deliver this improved product across you know the lower forty eight, the kind of Caribbean, South America, that sort of thing, um, and do so at in, you know for the foreseeable future. 